3 times 1 over 6 times 1 times 4. Make one big fraction out of it because it's all multiplication. Or, you don't have to do both, just choose one. You're going to do 5 times 3 over 6 times 1, and hold off on that 1 fourth for just a moment. In either case, I need you to notice that you're going to be able to simplify this. The 3 and the 6 do simplify. Why? Well, because I have it multiplied. It's not added or subtracted. It's multiplied on both the numerator and denominator. 3 goes into 3 one time, and the 6 two times. Are you getting pretty good at that, I hope? No. This is going to be 5 times 1 times 1. This is going to be 2 times 1 times 4. You're going to get 5 eighths. That's our answer for that, that version of it. Now, we should get the same thing over here. Let's see if we do. Here, the 3 and the 6 will simplify. 1 and 2, you get 5 over 2. This gives you 5 over 2. However, you still have 1 fourth. Do you see it? Extend our line. 5 times 1 over 2 times 4. Nothing simplifies. You still get 5 eighths. Same exact answer done two different ways. One way is a little bit more concise. Since you have multiplication of all three fractions, put them together and simplify. If you like the two fractions at a time, that's not a problem. Do it that way. How many people feel all right with this so far? Okay, good. Now I'm going to give you one more. It says pretty much everything encompassed in, in this problem, well, with the exception of subdivision. I want you to see if you can handle this. I'm going to put a problem similar to that on your test. That says 3 fourths plus 1 eighth quantity squared minus 1 half plus 1 eighth. <coughs> I'm not going to do this, <coughs> this with you. I'm going to have you do this on your own in just a moment, but I want to talk about it first. What's the first thing you might want to do here? Parentheses. Definitely parentheses. Do I want to deal with the exponent right now? No. no. I want to figure out this as one fraction first. I want to figure out this as one fraction first. Then I'll be dealing with my, my exponents. Then I'll be dealing with my subtraction last. Go ahead and try that on your own. I'll be walking around. If you need help, you let me know. I'll help. Also, there's no need to rush through this. Show your steps. I'd rather have you be slow and right than quick and wrong, okay?
philosophy at work so far. That's really good. We're going to start up here in just a few seconds. see how this thing's done. So firstly, of course parentheses come first. We're going to deal with those fractions inside of those parentheses, make it into one fraction. So basically, we're going to have several problems in one. We've got one problem, two problems. After that, we'll have something to do with x three problems, and then a subtraction problem. So we'll deal with our first couple, couple fractions. What's our LCD for the first two? I'm going to extend that a little bit. So we're going to multiply this by 2 over 2. We'll get 6 eighths plus 1 eighth squared. Gentlemen, are you with me? Minus, what's the LCD for our next couple Eight. fractions? Eight. So here we'll do 4 over 4. And we'll get 4 eighths. Cool, now we'll be able to combine those fractions together. If we do our first couple, we're ultimately going to get 7 eighths. We have 6 eighths plus 1 eighth. We're going to do 6 plus 1 over 8. Notice how we're not dealing with the exponent yet. Not yet. We've got to get one fraction first before we do the exponent. And we're going to do 4 plus 1 over 8. So put those together. You cannot do this. You cannot take this to a power and this to a power. It doesn't work. You can't do it. Uh, it's not legal mathematically. So you cannot square 3 fourths and square 1 eighth. You have to put those together in one fraction before you square them. Is that understood? The parentheses have to come before the exponents. Otherwise, you've done exponents before parentheses, and you're going to get that problem. So we're going to get 7 eighths squared minus 5 eighths. And I don't really need the parentheses anymore because I've done that problem. I have one fraction now. How many made it that far? Just show, show hands. Good for you. That's fantastic. All right. 7 eighths squared. Does a 7 get squared? The 8 get squared? Or both? Both. So we're going to have 7 squared over 8 squared. <coughs> Just a reminder. When you're squaring a number, it doesn't mean multiply by 2. So when we're talking about 7 squared, you're not supposed to get 14 out of that thing. You're supposed to get 7 times 7, or 49 out of that thing. Same thing with 8 squared. You're going to get how much? Well, not that. 64. Right. Yeah, 49. And what was the 8 squared? 64. Oh, we're almost done. The last thing we've got to do is somehow find a common denominator so that we can subtract those fractions. Can you tell me what is my common denominator? 64. Yep. So if we multiply by 8 over 8, we'll get 49. 49 sixty fourths. My what's the 40? Oh, sorry, what's the uh, the 5 times? 40. How much? 40 60 So we're going to have 49 60 fourths minus 40 60 fourths. So we got that common denominator. We'll put them together as one fraction. And lastly, we'll subtract. 49 minus 40, of course, we're going to get 9 out of that. How many will get 9 60 fourths? Good. If you worked all the way down, that means you know your fractions and you know your order of operations. The only thing that wasn't up here was multiplication and division. But if you can do this problem and you can do that problem, that shows me you got a pretty good understanding of what's happened in this, this class at this point. If you were successful on both of them, congratulations. That's pretty good. Do you feel okay with it? Yep. That's pretty intense, right? That's a lot of stuff going on. But is this anything you haven't done before? No. Not really? I mean, what, what are you doing? You're adding fractions? And subtracting fractions sometimes. You're doing exponents, we've done that. Multiplication, division of fractions, we've done that. It's just piecing it all together. The, the only problem is you have to be rock solid on every piece. 
Otherwise, the end answer is not going to be good enough. Not going to be right. You mess up one little one little spot. Blows up the problem. Do you feel okay with complex fractions or operations? Can we move on for you? Yeah. Are you ready? Good.